Welcome to Snow Motion. Hi, I'm Brenda Buglione, overlooking my favorite place to ski, the Back Bowls of Vail, Colorado. In today's chairlift interview, we will meet Chris Anthony, who co-produced Warren Miller's documentary, Climb to Glory. Next, I will give you ski tips that will improve your ski technique. All this and a whole lot more. Stay tuned, you're watching Snow Motion. Would it be easier if we had no shoes, no time to kill, and nothing to lose, and no worries but the great blue sky? And looking for shade when the sun gets high, we're climbing up that coconut tree. If it's time for one of nature's treats, would it be easy? It's a place where I feel at home. Every run is an adventure. Vail, it's like nothing on earth. Snow Motion is brought to you by The New Mitch by Paul Mitchell. Style isn't born, it's groomed. And by Surefoot. Better fitting, better skiing. Welcome back to Snow Motion. We're at the base of beautiful Beaver Creek, Colorado at the new Centennial Express. It's a high speed six pack plus a gondola. We're gonna ride this chandala with pro skier Chris Anthony and find out what he's doing in the ski industry this week. Today's snow motion chairlift interview is with professional skier Chris Anthony. He's been the inspiration behind the movie Climb to Glory. Tell us about this movie. <laughs> Thanks Brenda. Oh, I'm pretty fired up about this movie. This is a five-year project that all came about with just my uh, lack of knowledge about the, our, the men that became before us and those were the 10th Mountain Division. They were part of uh, the greatest generation and uh, they didn't they trained not too far away from here it's about 30 miles away from here in the pando valley and uh area that now is known as camp hale and uh those men trained there for a couple of years between the years of like 1942 and uh, 1944 before they were deployed into world war ii and um fought in italy and it was there that they uh were they, they achieved many great feats. They suffered a lot of losses, but what um, more inspiring even than that, what they did in the war, was when they returned back here to the United States post-war, is the impact that they had on the outdoor industry, particularly the ski industry. And right here, the Vail Mountains. I mean, uh, Pete Seibert, one of the, basically the veterans of the 10th Mountain Division, was one of the co-founders along with Bob Parker and several others of Vail Mountain. Those guys uh, were brought together for wartime means, which isn't the greatest reason to be brought together, but were the bonds that they created being here in the mountains and because of the mountains is what brought them all back together and then even more so brought them back to the United States and it gave them a goal to be very productive. And because of what they did, we have this today. And if you ever are cold, or you don't feel like you're tough, you gotta watch this movie. These guys are tough. Very, very tough. We actually, part of the film, part of making the film was for myself and uh, this Tony, or actually Tony Cyber, who's the grandson of Pete Cyber, as well as Scott Kennett, who is a descendant of one of the 10th Mountain Vets, for all of us to go and actually get on the same gear as that they were on in 1941 oh, to 1945. To see, this movie. to see you on the equipment that they used was just. <laughs> <laughs> it 
<laughs> Embarrassing. <laughs> like, oh, Chris can't do it. How did they do it? How did they do it? How I don't did they know. Turn? You look at the you look at the vintage uh, films that these guys of them skiing around on this equipment up there. You know, un groom slopes obviously and they were just ripping around and they were carrying their backpacks that were you know 90 pounds and above and uh, we actually had the backpacks on but I had mine stuffed with pillows. Yeah. Chris tell us about the different Warren Miller movies you've been in. <laughs> wow there's been uh, well I just finished filming my 26th year with them I don't know the name of that film as it's still in the works but uh, we just finished No Turning Back. That was, uh, uh, so my 25th year. Their 65th year, if you can believe it or not. And we shot that segment in Alaska. I was with um, Inger Backstrom and Jess McMillan. Awesome segment. Okay, tell the viewer what it's like to be in a Warren Miller movie. Oh gosh, I grew up with the Warren Miller films. You know, I had the posters on my wall and idolized all the skiers in it. And um, the, the, my parents, I think, took me to the films when I was in a crib. They just rolled me in and they, I was sitting there watching them and I always dreamed of being in one. So when that phone call came, it was very special. Are you ever afraid, I mean, if you do the big mountain and you're jumping a cliff or whatever you're doing? Do you there's there's oh, definitely there's... moments where you're really, really nervous. And I, I, you know, those guys that sit there and say, oh, I'm not scared. I, I, there's something wrong with them. They're, I'm scared all the time. And I think, but that's natural. It's keeping you in check. So there's a lot of times I've questioned a lot of the stuff that we're doing and it makes you really look deep inside and, and um, search for that extra special thing. The, the Warren Miller guys have been amazing too. They've been such a su great support system for me. They're really responsible for making the climb to glory happen. You know, I kept coming back to them with this story about these guys. So it was really a combination between that, in, that relationship with Warren Miller Entertainment and also the Colorado Ski and Snowboard Museum that they helped me pull this film off. And um, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm loyal to Warren Miller Entertainment. I'm loyal to our skiing. And I've just been able to just sort of live the dream and have fun. It's a good life, it's a good life. <laughs> but I think what you've done too with this movie, it, and you're saying how it's educated these young kids and really showing them history and how the sport started. Well, it's been fun. You know, my career has been long and extensive in skiing and the last now 26 years with the Warren Miller film. And I guess in a way that's made me a little bit of a, an image or a mentor for kids. So I've taken that uh, momentum and I've become, I've started a youth foundation, a youth project. And it's, I've been going into schools and, set, and inspiring kids through motivational speaking engagements. And this year particularly has been really fun because I've been able to take the climb to glory and into the films. And since it's a historical and educational film and it's also very inspiring, it's been a great subject matter that I get to bring into the classroom. And, the teachers love it, the parents love it, the kids are entertained, and when the kids are entertained and you have something like that in front of them, they're being educated. Are you getting more 5th graders, 6th graders, 7th graders out on the slopes? I, my goal is to inspire kids to be in the outdoors using the sport of skiing, and if we can roll some of them into this sport, I'd be absolutely delighted with that. But if anything, if we can just get them outdoors or just setting goals for themselves, you know, like to explaining to them that if you set something out there, you can actually chase it down and do it. I mean, I don't know, I, I wasn't the greatest student, but I, I, I learned to set goals for myself and it's worked, you know, it's taken me on a great journey. So I want to share that message. It's not all about the grades or the opening up the books and memorizing things. It's actually about setting a goal out and having right. something to chase yeah. after and be passionate about. And when the kid is passionate, when he's inspired, they start learning. They start learning a lot. So that's the goal of my youth initiative project is to inspire and educate and entertain kids. And then now I actually have a scholarship program tied onto it. So those kids that aren't financially capable of maybe reaching those goals, I can um, you know, help financially get them there. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah, it's fun. Because you're mean, a big kid. <laughs> Chris Anthony's a big kid. I love it. I love the sport. I love the outdoors and you know think of all our friends that are a part of it you know those that are here with us now and those that have gone as well as the watching the up and coming you know got the world championships happening in colorado this year it's just 
it's so great to see kids that you once that once were in the classroom that I was talking to and now they're competing at a world class level. And that's because they set goals for themselves. Yeah. You're setting the guideline and saying this is important for you. And you're an example, setting the goals and you and go out and reach them. I think it's super important for kids to have something to aim for. Set that something up there, whether it's academics, arts, or athletics. They need something, they need to put something out there and fall in love with it and be passionate about it. And they may not achieve that exact goal that they set for themselves, but they will be sent on a journey trying to get there. And on that journey, they're going to discover a lot about themselves and possibly maybe deviate to in another direction that they fall in love with. Well, we know about the goals with even all these top athletes that we are skiing with and that we know to reach a gold medal in the Olympics, they need to train and have a steps. Absolutely, you know, Michaela Schifrin, you know, still basically, you know, 19 years old. She was in elementary school not too long ago, and look at what she's <laughs> done by setting goals. Olympic gold medalist. Yeah, yeah. So it's so great to be out here and so great to be part of this industry and part of the filmmaking side of it too. And thank you for sharing this passion, this film, this documentary in your show. God, we're excited, Chris. It's going to be a highlight in this week's Snow Motion. All right. Now I've made it. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. You've reached your goal. Let's high five on that. All right. Well, let's go skiing. But first, clip your helmet, Chris. I'll clip my helmet. <laughs> you put your helmet He's, on. Oh, yeah, I will. I have it right here. I, oops, wait, wait. Here's my helmet. All right, we're going skiing with Chris Anthony. <laughs> For more snow motion fun, log on to my website at snow-motion.com. What we've done at Surefoot is really changed the way that you get ski boots. The sun shines bright. This boot is made for your foot. As the difference is amazing. You'll the ski light. better. They're better fitting, better skiing than anything you've ever experienced. In 2009, High Fives was formed to help athletes that have suffered a life-altering injury return to the sport they love. He said, whatever you need, we'll help you make happen. To become a member or to help support the cause, go to highfivesfoundation.org. Welcome back to Snow Motion. Chris Anthony shows us what it was like to be a soldier in the 10th Mountain Division in the movie Climb to Glory. Let's take a look. Sometimes to learn the greatest thing about the present, you gotta step back to the past. And action. Growing up in Colorado, I've heard about the men of the legendary 10th Mountain Division and their impact on Colorado skiing, which has been a big part of my life. I get to ski big mountains and deep powder. A lot of the guys who joined the 10th Mountain, you know, joined it not just to be ski troops, but because they enjoyed the mountains. It was really hard for them to ski, I bet, and uh, they made it look fun and they went up every day and I just hope I can uh, fulfill that legacy and just live my whole life based around the mountains and skiing. Located in Pando, Colorado is Camp Hale, where 14,000 men trained. From that came 8,000 skiers. And these guys were tough. I mean, the gear that they were on is unbelievable. Every day they were living out here and they were wandering up into these mountains and they would 
learn how to deal with the elements. If only they knew that uh, we were going to just come up here and just rip it up with some good turns. I really wanted to experience what the men went through themselves, so I tried on their gear. This has been a truly humbling experience. It was very hard work. You didn't have groomed slopes. You had crusted or deep powder. You were skiing in the trees. You were carrying 90 pounds of rucksack. Yeah, we had some good times skiing, but some real hard times too. We didn't know what to expect. I survived the campaign and survived the war. A number of the men returned to Colorado where their passion and love for the outdoors and the mountains resulted in the creation of our modern Colorado skiing industry. There were over 60 ski areas developed by men of the 10th, the Arapaho Basin, Aspen, Vail, and Steamboat Springs. We can attribute our Colorado skiing heritage to the men of the 10th. We were spared in war. We came back to the mountain environment that we loved. And our entire lives from that point on, here in Colorado particularly, were around us. We could hike, we could camp, we could ski, we could enjoy what the mountains had to offer. And it changed the lives of most of us. Ted Ligeti is the best giant slalom skier in the whole world. Let's find out how he became a champion. I started skiing when I was two years old and fell in love with it pretty quickly. In the beginning, he didn't do all that well ski racing. All of his friends were beating him, all the younger kids, boys were beating him, and girls were beating him. <laughs> he said, well, you know, I've got to do something. So I think that really gave me my drive. I think if I was good at a young age, I probably wouldn't be where I am today. When I won the gold medal in the 2006 Olympics, I actually wasn't crying until I saw my parents because both of them were both crying pretty hard. Our hearts were in our throats watching him and just thought oh, if he could get on the podium it would be amazing and then ends up winning. Just incredible. I'm in Beaver Creek, Colorado, heading up to see some of the best groomers in the world. When we come back, I'm going to give you a ski tip that will bring your skiing to the next level. It's a place where I feel at home. Every run is an adventure. Vail, it's like nothing on earth. What we've done at Surefoot has really changed the way that you get ski boots. The sun shines bright. This boot is made for your foot. As the difference is amazing. You'll the ski light. better. They're better fitting, better skiing than anything you've ever experienced. I woke up feeling great. Today was made for me. And life is good the way it should. In 2009, High Fives was formed to help athletes that have suffered a life-altering injury return to the sport they love. He said, whatever you need, we'll help you make happen. To become a member or to help support the cause, go to highfivesfoundation.org. It's 
No Motion is brought to you by Vail, like nothing on earth. And by Marker Vocal, rule the mountain. This ski tip has to do with the transition from one turn to the next. We call it the long leg, short leg tip. What does that mean? Well, when you're in a turn, the downhill ski leg is long and the uphill ski leg is short because it's bent. So when you're exiting a turn, your uphill ski, which is your short leg, will now become your new long leg. So basically, your long and short leg will reverse every turn. When you finish one turn and you're transitioning to the new turn, just remember, extend that leg straight at the top of the turn and pressure through the turn. The transition is important. It sets you up for the next turn. Extend the leg at the top of the turn and pressure down. You can really feel this tip when you're skiing steep slopes because there's a lot of angles. The downhill leg is straight and your uphill leg is bent. This ski tip may seem obvious, but when you really think about extending that old short leg into the new long leg early, right when you enter the fall line, it will help you make a good turn because you're using centrifugal force and gravity at the top of the turn and it'll be easier to carve. The fit of your ski boot can make or break your ski day. Surefoot makes custom ski boots, so every day is a good day. Let's learn more. The ski boots are different from like a shoe store or a shoes. You walk into a shoe store, you put a shoe on, it fits, it doesn't fit. The ski boot manufacturers, you know, they, they're trying to sell as many boots as possible and none of them can focus on your needs, whether you have a high instep a wide foot, a narrow heel or whatnot, they're trying to fit as many feet as possible. When I actually mold the inner exactly to your foot, so it is your foot's impression inside the ski boot. You know, if you go into a rental shop and you try on boots and stuff, they're never going to be close enough to your foot to make skiing easier for you. And you get a boot that's not really designed for your foot. Your foot will be moving around inside the ski boot. With a traditional ski boot, it takes a lot of time for the boot to break down and mold to your foot. What we do here at Surefoot is we eliminate that break-in process. Why waste time breaking in a boot, trying on numerous boots, when we make the boot, especially to your foot? Ski boots, that's the number one thing. It's the most important thing uh, that connects your body to the ski. And if they're fitted properly to your feet, then it makes skiing so much easier. But if you don't have a proper fitting boot, it doesn't matter what ski you're skiing on. You talk to anyone on the hill, you know, ski boots are the number one concern amongst people, that they always bother them and whatnot. And if we can eliminate the pain that people have with ski boots and can make it more enjoyable from the second they put their foot into a ski boot and enjoy the whole day throughout, then yeah, it helps immensely. And lift your heel up for me and back down. And point your foot in just a hair. When you get your custom boot from Surefoot, regardless whether you're a lady or a man, it's molded individually to your foot. And we start off by scanning your foot. We find out how your foot is shaped, the type of foot that you have, how your weight is being distributed, what your foot does in a neutral stance, in a weighted stance, in an unweighted stance. And then we talk to you about of the level of skier you are, how much skiing you like to do, what you're looking for from a ski boot. I have the inner dimensions from all of my ski boot manufacturers that'll tell me which boot is best suited to your ability and the type of skiing that you like to do and your foot shape. After we scan your foot, we also place an orthotic that supports your foot thoroughly so your foot's being supported and then we mold the liner around your foot to the shell that's best suited to your ability. With this type of a ski boot, when it's molded right to your foot, your brain thinks turn with your foot. You'll get direct response from your foot to the boot to the ski. It makes skiing so much more effortless. It's worth it because, you know, if it can make skiing more fun for you, that's ultimately what you're shooting for. But, you know, a decent pair of ski boots could last anyone, you know, five to ten years. And if you break it down, it's really not that expensive, you know. It's all comfort. If you're pain-free and you advance your skiing ability, it makes a huge difference. We guarantee everything we do at Surefoot. So if, you know, I have 24 other Surefoots that back up the guarantee. If you go skiing in another resort and you're having problems with your boot, you go in there, we'll work on it. Whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or full bore expert, I think it'll help you ski everything better. I mean, the quicker you think, turn with your foot, you get direct response from your foot to the boot to the ski. It makes everything much easier, whether it's powder, crud, 
ice or a hard pack. It, it doesn't matter. It just gives you a better feel for the snow, makes skiing much more easier. Skiing's been my life. It's all I've ever done. I want to pass that passion on to other people. And I think that one thing that holds people back in skiing is ski boots. Ski boots are uncomfortable for a lot of people. And what we try to do here at Surefoot is we try to make the whole skiing experience more enjoyable. It starts with having comfortable ski boots. It makes a big difference. That's it for this edition of Snow Motion. I hope you had as much fun as I did. I'm Brenda Buglione, and we'll see you next week out on the hill. Would it be easier if we had no shoes, no time to kill, and nothing to lose, and no worries but the great blue sky? And looking for shade when the sun gets high, we're climbing up that coconut tree. If it's time for one of nature's treats, would it be easy?